Hi everyone, welcome back. Nicole here with Edge of Wild. And today I'm going to bring you along for applying beneficial nematodes to the, to the garden. So I ordered from, uh, let's see. Here, our Bioco. I'll link it below. I ordered um, nematodes last Wednesday and they got here Friday last week, I believe. So I've had them in the fridge. Um, they come in a package like this. They come in like a little mail package, delivered it right to my door. It has a little sticker on it that says, the ice pack will be, will be melted and the package may be warm. Refrigerate unopened until ready to apply. You can refrigerate up to 14 days. I had to wait to get a sprayer. The instructions that came with it, um, a hose end sprayer was kind of like the recommended. What they recommend you do is you take your hose end sprayer, set it to the spraying settings that you want, whether it be two to four ounces. I chose four ounces because I have a pretty heavy infestation. Spray the entire area to figure out how many bottles, more or less, that it takes you to go through. And then figure out you know, let's say it took you three times to go across it. Divide the amount in here by three, roughly, and apply it that way at the same speed. Um, I'd not spray the whole garden. I haven't figured out that two rows takes about a bottle. So I'm going to divide this into, I have eight rows, so I'm going to divide it into four. Comes as like a little powdery thing you end up putting in the water. So what I'm going to do, I need to find slightly longer piece of hose so I need to find like a little 10 footer or whatever that we have and put that on the hose so that I can reach the entire garden and then I will divide this out. I brought a spoon with real mathematical division I'm just gonna make it level and draw an X throw it in there and, and get this applied um, I'll take you along for as much as I can but I have a very limited time frame so going to work as fast as possible. All right, I'm gonna go get the rest of the supplies I need. Okay, so I have my 32 ounces of water in the reservoir. They opened up the nematodes, which they pretty much just look like a powder. I'm gonna try to make them roughly level. Ish. And then roughly draw a plus sign. Okay, and each corner is going to be the amount that I need to put it, so I'm just going to sprinkle that in. I also took out the strainer basket. It says to remove the filter. It's the only thing I can come up with that is the filter for this item. I'm going to put that away and hide that again. This ice pack is cool again, so I think I'm going to stick it right back in the container on the ice pack to keep it cool for now. So it's in my, I don't want to get my spoon wet, so in there, it's kind of discoloring it and mixing in. So let's go get it applied in the garden. Yesterday I sprayed nematodes on the garden. Um, I tried to use the sprayer nozzle on the hose. After like 10 minutes, it's, it wasn't working right. I don't know if like something was caught up in the filtration system 
or I don't know what was going on. It just wasn't working. So I didn't have enough time to mess around with it and figure it out. What I ended up doing was using the watering can. I would just fill the watering can and then divided the amount that I had in four equal parts because I knew each part would do like 25 feet of a bed. And that's just how I did it. Right, wrong, or indifferent? I don't know. We'll see. They may or may not work. But they are at least applied. Once they were open, they had to be applied or they were going to be useless. So fingers crossed that worked. I think the whole idea of putting it on with the hose is then to saturate the soil. Because um, they, they really like the soil to be saturated for a couple days to establish. So, what I did then was I ran the water in the garden for like two hours yesterday. Because I was running the whole garden on the irrigation system. Just to saturate the soil. I think that worked. We're supposed to have rain showers on and off the next couple of days. That's why it's windy again. Also, it's like fall, so windy is now our normal. Um, so at this point, I got the other part of the order, which were Thrip Predators. I feel like they had a scientific name that I guarantee I can't say on here. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't say that and it might even be backwards. I will put it on the screen as to what they are. That came today. It has to be used the day you receive it. So it's just a little shaker bottle. I'm going to pop the top. Directions on this say that they are adults. Gently rotate this in order to distribute the mites throughout. Pop the top. Shake them out. This is avoid applicating in direct sunlight. So good news. It's a cloudy day. It is not totally direct sunlight. I mean, the sun keeps coming out, but it's cloudy. We should have a couple more showers, which should keep the soil moist. Okay, I'm going to set up and shake these out. Um, should cover the whole garden. There are 25,000 in here. We'll see how well I do. I'm going to put it in the worst areas that I know of and then just kind of go from there. And these only go after thrips, broad mites, and cyclamen mite. Again, I will link all this stuff below so that you can look it up. Okay, let's get to work. Time is limited, as always. Look what else I spy. That's a kachari melon that's ripening. I had one that had fallen off. I, it smells really sweet. I haven't cut it open yet. I've been kind of scared to. It's not going to get any riper, but so I should just try it. But yeah, I've got another one in there. That's exciting. We shall see. Okay, I picked it off. I don't know if it's totally ripe, but actually I just barely bumped it. And it came right off. And I was looking. Let's see here. This is where it was attached. It was here. But right across from that on this stem, this little curly cue is all dried up. So it's usually a good sign that it's ready. Like example, here's one that one's attached. This one is still very flexible and green. So that one's not ripe and it hasn't colored up yet. All right, so I have applied those bugs, the beneficial bugs. We're gonna hope, the sun is so bright in my eyes. It is still not direct sunlight, I promise. But 
I'm going to hope that that works. I'm going to hope that they go after the thrips. Fingers crossed. I probably will do this again come spring. Um, but I still am not sold that I am going to grow glads next year. I think I might just need to take a year off. I mean, it's no different than losing them all, so it just would save a little bit of money. So I think I might take a year off of those, do something else, see if there's another flower I can try, see if I can knock back the thrip population. It's crazy. I see glads all over the place. But for some reason, this garden massively, massively overrun with the thrips. And I see glads places that have been glads for years and not, it's not a problem. So I don't know. Must just be something that got in the soil. Um, kind of as a risk that you play when you, you order a bunch of bulbs and things like that. Because you just never know what's coming in. I think I'm going to probably make it habit now to always treat corms and things that come in with diatomaceous earth. Because it's not going to hurt them, but it should take care of any bugs or critters that come in with, with the corms or the bulbs or the tubers or whatever it is that you get. Okay, I am going to harvest my tomatoes quickly and go back inside before the little one needs to eat again. Thank you for coming along. Like I said, I will link everything down below and I will let you know if I notice much difference. Um, I know I'm not going to save my glads because they're all, they're all gone this year, but um, I'll let you know how, if it seems to help, if it cuts down on the population that's out there. Have a good one, everyone.